Herta Oberhuser was the only woman at the famous Nuremberg trial of the murder doctors. After 70 years, her atrocities and monstrous experiments on people are truly terrifying. The name of this Nazi criminal still serves today as a synonym for inhumanity and special cruelty, which, it would seem, a mentally healthy person cannot possess. Before you continue watching, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Of course, this is optional. Herta Oberhuser was born in 1911 in Cologne in a family of ordinary workers. Although her parents were unable to pay for her daughter's studies, nothing stopped her on her way to becoming a doctor. Herta combined her studies at the medical university with work and paid for her own tuition. Already in her student years, her character and political views began to manifest themselves. She was obsessed with her future profession and was an ardent supporter of Hitler's policies. Classmates also recall that during her studies, Gert seemed strange to them, was distinguished by pettiness and envy, was capable of meanness. In addition, during her studies and practice at the university, the future criminal was happy to conduct experiments on animals, in particular lifetime surgical interventions carried out to study body functions and develop various therapeutic methods. In 1937, Oberhuser received a medical degree, joined the Physiological Institute in Bonn and joined the National Socialist Party, which was mandatory at that time for anyone who planned to make a career in any field. Three years later, when she had already become a dermatologist, Herta saw a vacancy in the newspaper about recruiting medical personnel to the Ravensbrück concentration camp and applied. So in early 1941, she ended up in the largest Nazi women's concentration camp. At the end of the summer of 1941, medical experiments on prisoners and their children began to be carried out in Ravensbrück. They were led by Karl Gebhardt, and the performers were Herta Oberhuser and two male doctors. The latter tried to avoid participating in cruel experiments so Herta often took their work on herself and, apparently, did it with pleasure. She also engaged in the selection of prisoners for experiments, acted as an assistant during surgical interventions, and then watched the results. Most of the experiments in the camp were aimed at studying the vital functions of the human body in extreme conditions. So, doctors artificially created various situations that may arise during military operations, wounds, frostbite, burns, hypothermia. Specific injuries were inflicted on prisoners, and then experimental drugs were used to treat them. Almost all such experiments ended in death. In the materials of the Nuremberg trial, there is evidence that Herta Oberhuser perceived the patients as guinea pigs and not as people. Soon, experiments with the use of sulfonamide began to be conducted in the concentration camp, during which its effect on wounds was studied. To do this, the subjects were wounded in nails, dirt, glass and other objects were inserted into them, then the drugs of interest were tested on them and the condition of the victims was monitored. It is not surprising that after such interventions, few of the already exhausted and emaciated captives could survive. Gerda Oberhuser also participated in bone and muscle tissue transplantation, late-term abortions. She worked in the camp until the summer of 1943, and experiments were conducted in it until the fall of the Nazi regime. In 1946, Oberhuser was the only female doctor at the Nuremberg trials. In her defense, she said that she acted only as a performer, because a woman, according to her, is not capable of such terrible crimes. In addition, Herta assured that participation in sinister experiments, in case of survival, was the only chance to escape for the prisoner's sentence to execution. For war crimes and crimes against humanity, the court sentenced Oberhuser to 20 years in prison. 
On January 31, 1951, the term was reduced to 10 years. On April 4, 1952, she was released early. After her release, she worked as a doctor in Stocksy and at the same time in the Ionite Hospital in captivity. In 1956, she was recognized by one of the former prisoners of Ravensbrück. After that, she was dismissed from the Io Anatov Hospital. After being dismissed from hospital institutions, she opened a private medical practice, but against the background of incessant protests, she was forced to stop her medical activities. In 1965, she moved to Bad Hanif. She died on January 24, 1978, in the nearby town of Linz am Rhein. Thanks a lot for watching. If you are interested in such videos, then write about it in the comments and also subscribe to my channel.